coming few decades, the population of Africa is estimated to be at a staggering 2.5 billion people, which means one in four people would be African at that point. This is both exciting and overwhelming both at once. Now, most governments do have a plan in action for this unprecedented growth. In Kenya, we call it Vision 2030. And most of it is piloted towards industrialization. Africa as a whole comes with great potential to grow in various sectors. We already excel in agriculture and farming, real estate, tourism, and manufacturing. But when is the real time to move ahead with the new industrial revolution? I say the time is now. I'm sure there was a time when all of us were fascinated by laser printers shooting out 25 pages per minute in color. And then came the all-in-one desktop printers that printed a page every second. If you had one of these, you were a tech wizard. Now, I grew up 18 years of my life in a country where technology was very limited and resources were very scarce. Being innovative in high school meant printing your lab reports in color, all 50 pages, or building structures using cereal boxes, masking tape, and straws. But could there have been an innovative way to present my high school project? Or has, any, or has anything changed over the past 10 years since I left high school? Printing from printers like this could only give you an, an analysis in two-dimensional space. But what if that same design could be recreated and printed in three-dimensional space? Like this life-size version of a human heart. What if doctors were able to present to you your heart in front of you to analyze get a sense of feel before you actually make some expensive life decisions, before you actually enter treatment or surgery. All that we have been used to looking at are x-rays and MRIs on a piece of paper. To be honest, I never understood those images. I've had to nod my head every time a doctor explains something to me as if I knew exactly what he was saying. To be honest, I never did. But what if these images came to life? Now I see some of your faces here be like, that's only in science fiction. Well, then today we make science fiction a reality. The image you see here is a 3D recreation of the human knee model from compilations of 2D images of an MRI. The potential to revolutionize 3D printing in remote parts of the world extends far beyond sustainment. With this kind of technology, we're able to print dentures, for example. Could you imagine hospitals printing dentures on the spot? or patient individualized specific uh, prosthetics, like the one seen here. Some companies have already trialed with providing care to victims of natural disasters, in Haiti, for instance. But when a piece of sophisticated technology breaks down in the largest city in Kenya, Nairobi, finding a replacement part can often be difficult. For manufacturers, that could mean a loss in millions of shillings, or a halt to the production line. And for doctors and nurses throughout this straggling city, that could mean the difference between life and death. But with the application of this technology in hospitals and clinics, doctors are able to better explain pre-surgery procedures to patients. Dentists can use dentures to explain pre-surgery procedures to patients instead of x-rays. Schools and university teachers can now use 3D models in classrooms to better explain to students and to learn from a different perspective. A local startup in Nairobi has been on a mission to educate and 3D print, also print, also place 3D printers in the most rural parts of East Africa. So how exactly does this technology work? Why can't we just use other traditional methods of manufacturing like injection molding? Well, here's a video showing you something created from nothing to a three-dimensional physical holdable product. 3D printing is a process of strategically placing layers on top of layers to create complex geometries that other manufacturing methods cannot do. Okay, so what's the good about this? The cost, the simplicity, and the amount of savings used in material. How, you may ask? You're technically only printing on the area that you require. We've run into numerous cases where we get phenomenal products from clients who want to make about 100 to 200 pieces, but most of them are turned around because it's either not feasible by the manufacturer or the initial tooling investment is way too high, which drives the cost per unit up, making the product unsellable. 
But then we introduce them to additive manufacturing, where you really don't have to invest in expensive tooling. Instead, you'd have all, all 100 pieces ready, shipped to you within a week. You wouldn't really have to wait 30 to 60 days for your shipment to clear from customs. Take this 3D printed shower head, for example. If installed in rural homes, where basic sanitation provisions are rare, this 3D printed shower head could reduce hygiene-related diseases. An ideal shower head would typically, typically cost rural homes anywhere between 3,000 to 5,000 Kenyan shillings, whereas this 3D printed shower head would cost them anywhere from 1,000 Kenyan shillings. Retrofit this into any existing drum or barrel, and you have a fully functional shower system. But why stop there? The possibilities with additive manufacturing are endless. Over a billion people do not have access to safe, adequate housing worldwide. But what if we could end global homelessness? Companies in the Netherlands have been printing using concrete materials, such as this bench here that was printed in less than one hour. Let's face the subject on disaster relief housing for a minute. How long does it take a nation like us to set up housing for the displaced after a catastrophic event? Years, perhaps? But what if we were able to replicate 3D print houses and place it to the low-income household in less than a week? Companies in USA have established houses in rural settings for less than $4,000, like the one seen here. From nothing to ready to occupy in less than one week. But why stop there? Let's take this further. I'm sure we're all familiar with the plans for, for private, some, some private space companies to colonize Mars in the coming few decades. But how exactly do we plan on taking concrete material on multi-million dollar space vehicles to another planet? Whereas companies like AI Space Factory have plans of 3D printing housing pods using materials itself harvested from Martian surface. Now this truly is revolutionary. So what exactly are companies doing with 3D printing technology? They're printing much lightweight, stronger parts than ever, with a variety of materials to print from. 3D printing com uh, aviation companies are 3D printing parts with aims of looking at faster, cheaper methods of production. That should grab all of our attention. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the fourth industrial revolution breaking barriers. Thank you. Thank you.